Hi, this is Dr. Rudy Scarfalato again in our next in our series of videos on the anatomy and physiology program that we teach at ASHA. And in this presentation, we're going to be taking a look at the muscular system, which is the main event uh, in massage education. And the muscular system consists of about 600 or so muscles, and most of them are attached to the skeleton. Now, in the muscular system, as we teach it at ASHA, we put a big emphasis on knowing the points where the muscles are attaching to the bones, because that's what you need to do the, the really specific clinically oriented forms of massage. Now, uh, we divide the muscular system into two main parts. We call them the muscles of the head, neck, and trunk, which means the muscles attaching to the, the skull and the spine and the ribs, and then the muscles of the extremities, the muscles that attach to the arms and legs. The muscles of the head, neck, and trunk include many, many muscles that attach to the head here. And of these muscles, the ones that we pay uh, the closest attention to are the muscles that operate the jaw. If you saw the previous video, you know, we talked about the temporomandibular joint, which is often very painful and requires attention. Um, so in the muscular system, we learn the muscles that operate that joint so that you can learn how to treat those muscles. Uh, and then we talk about all the other muscles. The muscles of the neck obviously are important because uh, lots of folks have uh, painful you know, neck conditions. Now, the one thing that we do differently in our school as far as teaching the muscles of the neck is that we put a big, big emphasis on the muscles in the front of the neck. Rather than putting all our attention on the muscles in the back of the neck, even though usually when people have painful necks, the pain is back here. But we have found that the cause of the pain back here is quite often problems with the muscles on the front of the neck. What's happening is these muscles get very tight, and very contracted, and they make the person bring their head forward, and then that stretches and pulls these muscles causing them to work harder. So in addition to learning about these muscles and learning to work these muscles, we also teach these muscles and uh, you know, show our students how to effectively treat the muscles on the front of the neck so that these muscles can relax, so that the head can be held up straight, and so that the muscles back here can relax. And we find that that actually produces very good results with people who have chronic neck problems. Um, and then we do the remainder of the muscles of the head, neck, and trunk. We do the muscles of the spine out, obviously. Uh, these muscles are very important because this is where a lot of folks get pain, or upper back pain, lower back pain. So we do those very thoroughly as well. And we also learn the abdominal muscles uh, in here. Now the extremity muscles consist of the shoulder muscles, which are these muscles here. You could also see them here the arm muscles or upper arm muscles here, the forearm muscles here, and the hand muscles here. Now we pay very close attention to the muscles of the shoulder because some of those shoulder muscles are the muscles that we call the rotator cuff muscles which, which uh, a lot of folks uh, have heard of because the rotator cuff muscles are the ones that are involved in a condition known as a rotator cuff injury. And sometimes that injury is so severe that people need surgery. But we find that if they get the right kind of muscle therapy, sometimes they can bypass the, the, the surgery. Uh, so we learn about the rotator cuff muscles here. And then we go down into the arm muscles and the forearm muscles. Now when we do the forearm muscles, you will learn about certain muscles that are involved in a condition called uh, golfer's elbow and tennis elbow which are, have to do with muscles that attach to the uh, bottom of the arm bone here. Um, and then we go down into the intrinsic hand muscles, which is also very useful in helping folks who have carpal tunnel syndrome, which we talked about in the last video. And then we go down into the lower extremity and we talk about the gluteal muscles or the butt muscles. And this is actually very important if you want to be able to help people with sciatica, you know, sciatic type pain, which is the pain that radiates down the back of the leg. Quite often, sciatic pain has to do 
with imbalances with one or more muscles of the gluteal region, in particular the, the deeper muscles of this region. So we'll learn those muscles very thoroughly and then you'll learn how to treat them in the technique class. Now the thigh muscles here, we divide them into the, the back muscles and the front muscles and then the inner thigh muscles here. The back muscles are the ones that are commonly known as the hamstring muscles. There's three hamstring muscles here and the reason why we call them hamstrings is sort of a funny story is because the tendons of these muscles which you can feel on the back of your knee right here uh, they're very prominent and they're very stringy and in other animals they would use those tendons to, to hang the, that part of the animal up, up on the hooks uh, so that's why they're called ham strings because they're the, the, they form the strings in the hams and they use those strings to hang the ham on the hook that's the story of how we have come to call these uh, ham strings. Um, now in the front of the thigh we have a group of muscles called the quadriceps muscles which bodybuilders are very familiar with. They're commonly known as the quads. They're very powerful muscles here that allow us to straighten out the knee. And then down in the lower leg we have a number of very important muscles. In particular we have this muscle here which is commonly known as the calf muscle. It's called the gastrocnemius. And that is the muscle that actually literally pulls us up by our heels and allows us to stand on our toes. Very important for walking and running. That's the gastrocnemius. And then we go all the way down into the foot. We study the foot muscles, uh, which is often very uh, important, very beneficial for individuals who have fallen arches or other chronic a foot condition that necessitates that they go to a foot doctor. So that is the muscular system. Now in addition to talking about uh, the muscles themselves, we also talk about muscle physiology. Uh, we talk about uh, why muscles get sore when you exercise. We talk about, uh, talk about why muscles get bigger and stronger uh, through repeated exercise. And we learn about how massage helps uh, helps the muscles. So that is the muscular system. Obviously we spend more time on the muscular system than we do on any of the other systems, but, um, but that doesn't mean that the other systems aren't important. In the next video we will cover all the other systems in the body. Thanks for watching.